Hi there, my name is Frank McCallum. I'm one of the associate principals here at Vista Virtual School. In this video, we're gonna go through some of the important details and facts around our upcoming summer semester. A uh, quick note that we like to do videos that are under uh, five minutes long whenever possible. This one is going to be a long one. It's gonna be probably over 10 minutes because there's a lot of important details to cover, but really a lot of important information for you to know before you decide whether to register for the summer semester this year. First things first, the registration is open on May 15th at 10 a.m. Uh, there is an online registration form that is completed on our website in the upper right-hand corner under the register here link. Um, if you do complete the registration and submit it correctly, you will at least receive an auto reply indicating that that course or that registration has been submitted. It does take us about a week to uh, uh, process a registration, but you will get an immediate notification that your registration was received. If you do not get such a notification, you're going to want to contact our support group. Their uh, contact information will be at the end of this video, uh, because if you do not get that automatic reply, check your spam folder, then it means that your registration has not been received. In terms of our summer school, students can register for a maximum of 10 credits across all summer schools in the province. Uh, you can only take one core course with us. That means that if you want to register in more than one summer school, that's fine, but there's a 10 credit maximum for the summer school, and you can only do one core course with us. Also, a quick note that you can't take the same course in more than one school location. So if you're going to try and take Bio 30 here and Bio 30 in another school to try and see where you get the higher mark, that's not going to work because you can only be in one place. A big note is that when you register for a summer semester course, the prerequisite course and mark must be on your official transcript. You cannot have a report card or a progress report or anything like that. We need to have completed marks uh, when you do your registration. So if you're currently in, say, for instance, Social Studies 10-1, and you want to do Social 20-1 for the summer, you're not going to be able to do that. The reason for that is because we need to have your completed mark on your transcript before we process you into a new course. Also, a side note here that for grade nine students who don't have transcripts, you do have report cards, uh, we do not allow grade nine students going into grade 10 to take grade 10 core courses. You can take things like phys ed, COM, CTS options, things that will put you ahead for your grade 10 program. Last quick note here is that we do have class caps this year, especially in some of the humanities courses, which have tended to have very high registrations. Uh, we will be creating a wait list, and that wait list will be um, processed or completed by July 4th. In terms of the closure of registrations, that's on Friday, June 16th at 4 p.m. We will not accept any registrations after that point. If you start a registration at 359 and finish it at 405, we will not be accepting that registration. That is a hard and firm cutoff. Also, you have to have completed prerequisites on your uh, transcript by that time. So if you uh, say we're on the quarter system and you did complete a course in the third quarter and you're waiting for that to be on the transcript, that needs to be on the transcript before the closure of registrations on June 16th. And as I mentioned previously, uh, for courses with class caps, we will be putting together a wait list. For that wait list, we expect to have uh, students notified if they are put onto the course by July 4th. We are not going to belabor this because the summer is a very short period. It's four weeks of assignments plus an exam period. In terms of that summer semester course, it's a very independent form of uh, learning. It's asynchronous. You're going to be wanting to do at least 20 hours a week uh, on a core five credit course. Um, so if you're going to take a core course with us and a core course at another summer school location, obviously that's up to you. But that's at least 40 hours a week. If you're planning on traveling, if you're planning on working this summer, you really need to consider whether or not a summer semester course is right for you because there's only so many hours in the day. Uh, our teachers are available by phone or email during regular school hours. Uh, for clarifying questions, and there's a 24-hour turnaround. So if you were to call or drop an email on, say, a Monday afternoon, you'd expect a teacher to get back to you by Tuesday afternoon. In terms of the submission of work, uh, we like to have the courses open a little early so you can get a look at them. 
We aim for June 29th, June 30th as much as possible. But in terms of submission of work, submission of work starts on July 1st at 9 a.m. So assignments can start being handed in on July 1st, even though that's a weekend. You can start handing in assignments and uh, some of our staff will get to it and start reviewing it and marking it. Uh, teachers will not be available for questions until the regular school week begins, but you can start submitting work on July 1st and all assignments have to be submitted by July 28th at four o'clock. So that means at the end of the school day on July 28th, assignments are closed. Any assignments that are not done will be awarded zeros. Um, a quick note that there is an awful lot of reading. This is an asynchronous um, form of learning. We do try to chunk or break down units into small pieces, but there's still a fair amount of reading to get from unit to unit. So please be aware of that. When you do that registration, again, on the upper right-hand corner of our website, register here. We do need your Alberta student number. That's a nine-digit number. That's typically on your report cards or progress reports. Um, some school divisions do have their unique identifying numbers, but they'll usually put in smaller letters underneath Alberta student number or ASN. So you're going to want to be looking for that. You can also find that uh, on the uh, MyPass website, which is the Alberta Education website. Um, prerequisites, again, I've said it before, I can't stress this enough. The prerequisites have to be complete and on your transcript at the time of registration. And there are prerequisite marks. If you look at our website, it's not just having a 50 to move on to the next level. Because these are very compressed, very accelerated courses, we do have higher prerequisite requirements, usually around 60 65 or 70 percent to get into the next level. We do need your proof of citizenship. That would be something like a Canadian passport, a birth certificate, a permanent resident card. One thing that we cannot use is a driver's license. A provincial driver's license actually does not require citizenship to obtain. So we can't uh, use that as a, a proof of citizenship. If you submit a registration and it's missing documents, if it's missing parent contact information, if it's missing the proof of registration, we will not process that registration. We will ask you for the missing materials, but we will not process that until a complete registration is in. And that's important because if you've got class caps, your registration will not be put into that course until the registration is complete, which means if you reach the class cap while your registration is in process, you'll be put onto the uh, waiting list. Many of our courses do have textbooks. They're the same textbooks that you'd be using in any school, uh, perhaps even in a course that you took previously. Uh, when we process a registration, we send you a link to pay for a textbook deposit. That textbook deposit is the full cost of the textbook. As long as that textbook is returned to us in good condition at the end of the summer, we will refund your money 100%. And let me stress that we need that back by the end of the summer. Our summer school is done by August 11th. That means you have time until September to get your materials back into us. It's not October. It's not November. It's not next summer. If we don't have your materials into us in a timely manner, then we have to use your deposit to buy a new textbook and you'll forfeit that deposit. So please make sure that you're returning the books in good condition at the end of the summer school. Some important dates. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a June 16th deadline to register for those five credit cores. Uh, in terms of withdrawals, now, if you're registering for a diploma level course, English 30-1, Bio 30, Social 30-1, you have until July 4th at four o'clock to withdraw your diploma courses. We know that some people apply for summer school because they're not sure what their final mark is in their school. If you get your final mark from your school and you realize that is sufficient, then you can withdraw from the 30 level course and open up a space on the wait list. If you do not, we will report a mark. Now, recognize that that will only go on to your unofficial transcript, not necessarily your official transcript, but we will report a mark for a diploma level course if you do not withdraw by July 4th at four o'clock. For all other courses, the 10 and 20 levels in particular and option courses, you have until towards the end of July, July 21st to do that withdrawal. Again, a reminder that assignments have to be completed by July 28th uh, at four o'clock and exams by August 4th at four o'clock. So there's a completion for the um, uh, assignments and then there's an exam period. Our teachers are around then the following week in case there's any sort of uh, appeal exam process or anything like that. Also a quick note that if there is no work submitted in your course by 3.30 on July 7th, your course will be deleted or removed and there'll be no opportunity for you to get back into that course. With such a compressed time frame, we need you working in your course immediately. If you're gonna be taking a week or two off at the start of July, summer programming is not right for you this year. I cannot stress that enough. 
Also, please make sure that you keep an eye on deadlines. Uh, teachers set up deadlines so you can see where you're going to need to be to get to a, a completion by July 28th. So please make sure you're following your deadlines. Last thing for those diploma level courses, uh, if you've written a diploma exam already, you're not required to rewrite a diploma exam. Sometimes you're just trying to improve your school mark and that's fine. If you do need to write a diploma exam, if you haven't previously taken a diploma exam in a, in a course or subject, uh, keep in mind that we have two writing centers, one in the southern part of the province at the University of Calgary and one in the northern part of the province, which is about an hour, hour and a half uh, northwest of Edmonton. It's RF Staples School that's located in Westlock. That is our school division. So there are two writing centers for us for diploma exams. If you do have further questions or need more information, a uh, couple of pieces, there's our support staff email um, so that if you uh, do have specific questions, file, feel free to fire those in. And then, of course, there's the web page for our summer program that will have things like your prerequisite chart, things like that. That's probably how you got to us. So other than that, we look forward to serving you this summer. Please make sure that you reflect on whether or not um, this program is right for you at this time. Summer programming is very helpful to help people to catch up on courses they may have missed, but it's not for everybody because it is such a compressed and it's a very stressful and pressurized time. So all the best and we will see you this summer.